Welcome to the Unapologetic Man Podcast. The only podcast that's all about self-improvement, confidence, success, women, and being a man without making any apologies for it. What is up, gentlemen? Thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of the Uniform Mike Papa, the Unapologetic Man podcast. I really do appreciate you joining us. And today, we're going to give you three, actually make that five, because I always deliver things to talk about with girls to break open the conversation. This, guys, is the most typical question I get in the coaching calls from my clients. It's always the first thing they ask is, what do I talk about? How do I break open conversations? And certainly, I give them tons and tons of techniques and gambits and tricks and conversational topics and stories and all these things that I teach them to do. But this one is really good for breaking it out early, getting into some conversations and doing the most important thing, which is building attraction in a woman. So I want to ask you this. How do you think attraction is quickly built, very quickly built? Well, perhaps a lot of you don't know, so I'll go ahead and answer my own question. It's through play fighting, play fighting, teasing her, fucking around like kids on the schoolyard. With women, attraction is not a choice, and attraction usually comes down to very childish things, such as being playful, giving her those feelings like she's a kid in the schoolyard, and this is why busting their chops, teasing them, passing notes back and forth, Being like kids and just being playful is so powerful, boys. I don't want you to underestimate this. I get so many clients who are engineers and doctors and lawyers and anything under the sun where they're like STEM professionals, science, technology, engineering, and math. And these guys are so serious. And it's easy to break them out of that habit because we've all been playful at one time. Yeah, they're serious now. They're very mathematically oriented. But once I get them thinking how to be playful again, Everything fucking changes. And this is why my program is so goddamn effective. This is why what I talk about in this podcast is so effective. Is because it's all about being playful. Remember that saying, girls just want to have fun? There's even a goddamn song that talks about it. That is so true. And it's one of the main things I would tell you to become attractive to women. So a lot of you guys listen to podcasts and guys come into my program and they're all studious and they're all trying to memorize shit. And that's good. I want them to memorize shit but they lose that all-important essence of being playful, fucking around, throwing spaghetti on the wall and seeing what sticks. So what I'm gonna teach you today are some easy methods to crack open conversations in order to get into this playful vibe. Now, obviously, and I can't believe I even have to say this, but this is just to avoid an onslaught of emails questioning my techniques. It's all about the delivery, okay? Wrong delivery at the wrong time is gonna make it blow up in your face. So what's the most important thing? It's confidence, it's delivery, it's tone, it's bearing, it's believing in the content, and most importantly, believing in yourself. That's the way these hit, and they will hit for you every single time if you simply believe in it. So hear me out. If you like it, use it. If you don't, then don't use it, because your belief in the line is literally 90% of it. But your Uncle Mark Singh's got your back. I'm going to teach you what to do. This has worked for me freaking 10,000 times over because the shit is so damn effective. Now, I want to give a shout out to two new clients, Eli and Ryan. What is up, brothers? Thank you so much for coming into the program. And this is derived out of some of their questions. And the obvious question, of course, is how do I break open the conversation? How can I make it more flirty? How can I get into that energy of flirtiness, not just platonic vibing? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Before I jump into the content, that's right, buddy. You know what I got to do? I got to read yet another testimonial. And this one, damn, dude, this one brought a tear to my eye. Actually, there was a dude who graduated and big shout out to you. I'm not going to say your name because you might be embarrassed, although I don't know why you would be, who shed some tears when he fucking graduated saying I changed his life, was the best investment he ever made, was just thanking me up and down. Like, seriously, I'm glad I wasn't in the room with the dude and we were just on a Zoom call because he would have bear hugged me until I fucking died. The dude was so pumped up. And he deserved to be, man. He showed up, did the work, invested himself. And I do that for every single client who graduates. It's not the first time we've had tears shed in a goodbye speech. Happens all the goddamn time. And I will admit, it's a little embarrassing, but I did shed a few tears myself out of 
my non-shooting eye, of course. Got to keep that right eye clean just in case you need to pop a few Taliban who unexpectedly come into your office while you're in the coaching room. So let's read this testimonial and then we'll get into the content. This is from my boy, Taylan. Taylan says, hey, Mark, I wanted to write this testimonial to you when I was ready to. You don't want to read this out on your podcast, bro. Otherwise, we're both going to drop a couple of tears. I've been told all my life that I was handsome, but I was getting zero results. I entered Mark's program like many of you, looking to get better with dating, but I soon realized not only am I getting better with women, but my perspective on life is shifting drastically. From 2020 to 2022, I went on four dates. Gentlemen, that's four dates in two years. And yeah, this guy's good looking, man. He looks like a Fabio with the long hair, the good looking face, and the V-neck t-shirt popping his chest out of the bureau. You'd be amazed. This guy went on four dates in two years. He goes on to say, within the first seven weeks of the program, I went on 14 dates. I have to attribute this to Mark's NLP. Any, and I mean any negative belief system you have, had, or will have, can be removed like an abortion, quickly, efficiently, and with no regrets. Don't believe in your business idea. Don't believe in your actions. Don't believe in yourself. Perfectionist, cynical, overthinker, angry, always seeing the worst in people, reactive, vindictive, afraid of losing money, think the world is evil, good women are rare. These are all belief systems put on you during childhood. And Mark's NLP can literally address these and not only make your life with women better, but your life in general. Thanks to Mark's guidance, I now have zero approach anxiety and fear of rejection. I deeply believe that I can achieve anything. I have great girlfriends in my social circle. I have made international friends. I've been laid multiple, multiple times. I've been insulted and responded with love. I feel more masculine and purpose-driven now than ever before. My love and respect for women is immeasurable. My excitement for life is immeasurable. I promise you, Mark will change your life by squashing all limiting belief systems. This is not only dating coaching, but life coaching. And what sets us apart from any other program is the NLP. Thanks, Mark. Once we all die, I cannot wait to meet you again in heaven so we can duel it out like the Vikings do in Valhalla. Talon, you are a goddamn fucking champion. Much love to you, brother. You're also Australian. And of course, I love my Aussies. And I want to give a shout out not only to my Aussies, but to my American listeners. You guys have been sending so much love. The reviews have been awesome. I've been getting such moving emails from people lately. I just feel absolutely blessed that I get to be your podcast host, that for some of you, I get to be your dating coach. And sincerely, brother, if you're listening right now, seriously, man, like from my heart, brother to brother, warrior to warrior, soul to fucking soul, I appreciate you, man. And I love you, brother. Seriously, I love you. And don't get embarrassed now. Don't start blushing. I got a lot of love for you, man, because I know you could be doing anything with your time right now, but you're choosing to listen to me. And I sincerely appreciate that. All right, gentlemen, so I teach three different ways to break open conversations when first talking to a girl. And they are one, having her work for you. Two, having a play fight with her. And three, having her stalk you. Now listen closely, all right? I know initially you're like, what the fuck is he talking about? Let me explain. Okay, so in the example, my new client, Ryan, said he approached a girl at a gym and her shoes are always so clean. By the way, Ryan, good job noticing that. So he went up to her and said something along the lines of, I have to ask you, what is up with your shoes? Every time I come in here, they're like brand new. How many new pairs of shoes do you have? Okay, not a bad opener. I like it. So she's like, oh my God, thanks for noticing. I actually wash my shoes. And he's like, you wash your shoes? Who does that? She's like, yeah, I put them in the laundry. I do X, Y, Z. And I was actually thinking these shoes are a bit dirty today. So I was a little embarrassed. And he's like, no, nah, man, they look great. Anyway, my name's Ryan. What's up? What's your name? She's like, hey, I'm Jessica. Nice to meet you. And then he peaced out. And this goes into what I teach called a campaign. A campaign is where you do multiple touches on a girl over an extended period of time because you know you're going to see her again. These are great for gyms. These are great for people who work at the supermarket, Starbucks, the sandwich shop you go to, that cute girl at your penis enlargement appointment. These are the kinds of girls that you want to do a campaign on. So Ryan's doing a campaign on this chick, and that was the first approach, stack, 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 eject. He'll do it again and again and again until he gets three signs of attraction, then he'll qualify her, and then he'll go for the phone number if he chooses. So what I said to him is, listen, you need to break open conversations like this, and you could do so with three different methods. In fact, boys, I'm going to give you five different methods because... 
I always deliver in the UMP. And by the way, I always deliver in my coaching program too. There's a lot of shit I give to my boys that I don't mention on this podcast or on my sales page. And that's because that's who I am. Give more than what you ask for in return and you will always be blessed. Just like I'm blessed to have you as a listener and more specifically to have my clients. Clients, if you're listening, fucking love you guys. You're goddamn champions, goddamn warriors. And for you guys who are going to be my clients, let's go, brother. I want to meet you. I want to work with you. You're a fucking champion. And I can't wait to make you a goddamn girl magnet. So to break open the conversation, we have these three different methods. The first one is girl works for you. Now, this isn't exactly as it sounds, but this is the best way I can explain it. If I heard, and I told this to Ryan, if she's like, oh, I clean my shoes all the time, I immediately go into a teasing format where I ask her to clean my shoes and I'll pay her a ridiculously low amount to do so. So if she's like, oh yeah, I clean my shoes every day. I like to have really clean shoes. I would have been like, sweet. So you have a cleaning service. Listen, I know you charge like a dollar an hour for that. I'll pay you 50 cents just to get started. And I have like 20 pairs of disgustingly dirty shoes that by the way, smell like 200 feet farted that you can clean for me. And I'll give you, let's settle on $3. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm creating a play fight, which is actually my next thing that I'm going to talk about. When you ask the girl to work for you or you say, hey, I need to hire you to become my bodyguard when she's really bitchy to you, she does something like dog sitting where you can hire her and you always offer her a really low rate. Now, the reason we're doing this is to get into that all important play fight. Think again of children on the schoolyard. What are they doing? They're busting each other's chops. They're teasing. They're having fun with one another. So what you're doing is you're instilling into an otherwise boring conversation, teasing and playfulness, which is one of the methods I use all the time of you are working for me. Now, this also works into what I call hypo stories. Hypo stories are hypothetical stories that all tell girls to lead them into these kinds of situations. So for example, maybe I would have said, you know what? I heard all about your shoe cleaning service. Actually, I hired you a year ago. You don't remember, but you tried to clean like two pairs of my shoes and you absolutely wrecked them. They came back just completely decimated. What kind of service are you running here, Jessica? So you're just fucking with her. And again, delivery boys is 90% of it. I can imagine some guy who's completely miscalibrated, incongruent with who he is saying this, and it just blows up in your face. Obviously, you have to have the right vibe. If she reacts to you in a positive way and she's so excited about her shoes, then you can bust her chops a little bit. And one thing I like to do is work-related stuff. This also goes into a subsection that I want to mention here. When a girl tells you what she does for work, one of the best things you can do is either A, ask her why she wanted to become that, what she's passionate about or what she likes best about it, or B, if it's a shitty job, how she takes revenge on the clients, how she takes revenge on customers, or what she could do because it's such a shitty job. For example, I met a girl who worked at the DMV. So I was like, do you ever just want to choke them out because they're so stupid? Like they come up to you not having the paperwork. They have to take a number and they're all bitching because they have to wait. You ever just want to uh, choke them out? And she's like, oh my God, yes. And now we're relating to one another. And then what I did again was a hypo story telling her that, oh, you were the one that was arrested, right? I heard about you. You did choke somebody out and you went to jail in Fort Collins. That was you, wasn't it? So what I'm doing is I'm pointing out something shitty about her job. I'm creating a hypothetical story about how she was arrested. She's beating everybody up. She can't be trusted. She's on the FBI's most wanted list. And then this creates a play fight between us. She might come back and say, no, I heard about you. You were the one who did X, Y, Z thing. And then you guys can have a play fight. And that's so damn important. And that goes into my play fight thing. I will open girls in a play fight. I'll be like, what's up, punk? You trying to fight? right? She's looking at me at the bar. I'll go over and I'll be like, I noticed you were mad dogging me, staring me down, giving me that stink guy. You're trying to fight punk. This creates an automatic flirty environment because she's like, yeah, I'm trying to fight. I'd kick your ass. I'd be like, dude, I'm going to pick you up, throw you on my shoulder like a fireman, go outside and like one of those Olympic catapults, swing you around by your legs and launch you across the street. And she might say, no way. I take kickboxing. I'd kick you right in the balls before you could do that. I'd be like, oh, you think so, huh? You think so? And she's like, oh yeah, I definitely could. And then we can go into that fight more and have a hypothetical story about being in a play fight. I will do this all the time. There's a bar I go to where there's a mirror behind the bar. 
I'll walk up to girls purposely right next to them, order a drink, kind of be ignoring them. I'll be looking at them through the mirror. When they make eye contact with me through the mirror, I'll shove them a little bit. Not too hard, obviously. You know, we need to be socially calibrated. But with my arm, I'll just be like, and give them a little shove. And then they'll shove me back. Now we're in a play fight. I'll turn to her and I'll be like, what's up, punk? You trying to fight? I don't think you got what it takes. What gang you represent? What set you repping? What set you repping, girl? And she'll laugh and she'll be like, I'm repping this set and that set. And now we have that dynamic. That's all important. Okay, so the first one is she's working for you in some way. You're going to hire her to do X, Y, Z thing, and you're going to vastly underpay her for her work. Subsection of that is when she talks about her work, if it sucks, I always ask her if she takes revenge on clients and or customers. If her job is awesome, like you can tell she's really into it, she's super passionate, whatever, she's an entrepreneur like I am, and let's say she's an NLP coach for women or something like that. I would ask, what do you like best about that job? What's the most fulfilling part of it? Because we want to get her into her emotions. So we have those two. She's working for you and now play fight. The third one, and this is perhaps my most favorite, is that she's stalking you. She's obsessed with you. My God, do I use this all the time. Okay, and oftentimes, I'll just be like, so Amy, I know your secret. And she's like, what secret? I'll be like, listen, I saw the stalker hide in my backyard. I could see the glint off of the scope on your rifle pointing at my window. Dude, you leave the ladder on my house literally every day of the week and I have to put it back in the garage. All right, the stalker Texas Ranger showing up at my house, texting me at 3 a.m. Kelly, slow down on that, okay? We need to relax with your stalking because it's going a little crazy. So what I'm doing is I'm accusing her of stalking me, being obsessed with me, right? Having a picture of me on her ceiling, right? Having a statue of me in her backyard with lay champion chiseled in the granite beneath my feet. Dude, I go extreme on this when I can tell there's a good vibe between us. She likes to be teased and I create these hypo stories that explain how she's obsessed with me. Number four, and this of course might be used when we have a little more rapport, we have some good chemistry between us, is I do hypo stories about her and I traveling together. So I might say, hey Kelly, remember that time when we were traveling in Greece and you burned down that poor gyro shop, that poor guy had worked his entire life, saved money from generations to open his little gyro shop on the beach and you got drunk and you burned it down and then you peed on it. Throwing your leg up on a tree like that and launching pee on it, so disrespectful. Then we got in a fight and of course you wanted to run away and I came and I ran after you and I grabbed your arm and I'm like, stop Jessica. And I grabbed you and then I'll grab her boys, right? I'll grab her by both arms as I'm explaining this. And then I grabbed you, Jessica, just like this. And I was like, Jessica, don't run from me. You know we have so much chemistry. And then right there, boys, you could kiss them by creating a hypo story where she's doing X, Y, Z thing, running away from you and you grab her hand and you say, don't go. I just think we have too much chemistry. And then you kiss her and then you start to whisper in her ear how you guys had sex on the beach. Are you kidding me? This is so powerful. Okay, so hypo stories is something else I'll do where to break open the conversation, to keep it going, just make shit up. Make shit up about her stalking you. Make shit up about how you guys traveled to XYZ place. Make shit up about how you went out to dinner, got in a huge food fight, then came back home and we're all mad at each other. And then you just had sex like goddamn teenagers the first time they had sex, just wild ass monkey sex on the bed, makeup sex, which of course is always the best sex. So you see what I'm doing? I'm creating stories out of thin air making it playful, making her a stalker of me, making her work for me, her and I are having play fights. This is how you generate attraction in women. All right, boys, the last one I like to do, and I feel like I need to teach this to you guys because I see it time and time again, it is one of the most gigantic mistakes, is instead of commenting on something obvious about her, you comment on how other people comment on that obvious thing about her. I was talking to this chick the other day with blue hair. Do you think I asked her about her blue hair? Hell to the no, dog. I would never fucking do that. Why? Because girls get asked about the same obvious shit time and time again. That's why when she has amazingly beautiful eyes, you don't comment on them. She has perfectly straight, pearly white teeth that you can tell with a reasonable amount of dental certainty that they're veneers. You don't want to fucking comment on them. You don't want to comment on her super obvious outfit 
or a tattoo on her arm that's a gigantic owl that every other motherfucker comments on. So I'm talking to a girl with blue hair and I'm talking to her and I'm like, let me ask you a question. How many jackasses come up to you per day asking about your hair? So instead of commenting on that obvious thing, I will comment on how everybody else comments on it and how annoying it is for her. So immediately she's like, oh my God, all the time, seriously, like 10 times a day. And then I'm like, how socially unintelligent do you have to be to comment on something as obvious as your blue hair? And by the way, we're dressing you up as a blueberry for Halloween. I got a perfect blueberry outfit for you. We're going to dress you up. You got the hair to match it already. We're set for Halloween. So you see, I'm relating to her with something that clearly annoys her, and then I'm kind of busting your chops, I'm creating a hypo story, and I'm merging all these things together. So gentlemen, this is a great way to break open the conversation and to make it more playful. Let's go over them again. She's working for you in some way, and you're going to pay her an astronomical low rate to do the job. You're going to ask way too much of her. You're going to create a hypo story about it, and you're going to tease her. Second one is a play fight. You can do this in a myriad of different ways, even approaching a girl and saying, what's up, punk? I saw you staring me down. If, for example, she's checking you out, but during the conversation, I love to, for example, take commonalities such as she really likes to snowboard and I really like to snowboard and make that the reason we wouldn't get along. So if she tells me she really likes to snowboard, I would say, oh, that sucks. She'd say, why does that suck? And I'd be like, because I like to snowboard too. I'd be so much better than you. You get butt hurt. We get in a big snowball fight. You break my tooth. And I'd have to walk home looking like Jim Carrey from Dumb and Dumber. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, so those play fights are really, really powerful. The third one, also so powerful, and I almost do it in every single conversation, she's stalking me. She's obsessed with me. She has a fucking statue of me. She can't stop thinking about me. And I get it. I get it. You know, my attractiveness, it's very difficult to resist, so I don't hold it against you, Kelly, but relax. You know, the 3 a.m. text, especially when you're texting me like 400 times in a row, listen, my cell phone overheats and I have enough burns on my leg as it is, so relax with the texting. So powerful, boys. The next one is hypo stories, making up stories of you and her doing something together, such as traveling to Greece, such as going on a gigantic hike, such as camping together, and she did X, Y, Z thing. Whatever you can think of to tease her and make it like she's so into you and you guys have a lot of fun together. And of course, always ending in makeup sex if, and I really want you to listen here, pay attention. I know you're losing attention. Pay attention. If you see that she's into talking about sexual type stuff, such as you've gotten signs of attraction, she seems into you, then you could do hypo stories about sexual type stuff. And my last one, gentlemen, is to point out something obvious, but don't point out that thing. Point out the fact that everybody else points out that thing and how annoying it must be for her. So those are the three awesome ways to crack open conversations with girls with, of course, two bonus ones. I always over deliver. And gentlemen, if you think I over deliver in this podcast, just wait until you come join me in my three-month coaching program. If you'd like to get the same results Talon did, if you'd like to shed a tear the way that absolute champion did in his goodbye speech in our last coaching call, telling me it was the best fucking investment he ever made in his life, come join us, man. Come explore it with us. If you sign up, there's no commitment necessary. The only thing I ask is you reply to my emails within 24 hours. You're honest with your answers. You are fully fucking committed to becoming a 10 magnet and you're ready to change yourself once and for all. If you have those attributes, you too can become a girl magnet. I use NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, to remove belief systems, replace them, and have you acting like the man you were meant to be. Not trying to turn you into a little Mark Singh. I'm turning you into the dude who you were born as before other people came and fucked you up. Sign up on my website, coachmarksing.com. Click on coaching, fill in the quick application, slap it in. You and I are going to email back and forth a little bit to get to know each other. Then you're going to get on a free one-hour NLP session with my boy, Victor Lynch, to decide if we can 10X your results with women. It's time to update the files in your head. It's time to get solid 10s into your bed. It's time to stop being chosen by girls, but choose instead. Gentlemen, I do appreciate you listening. I drop podcasts on Mondays and Thursdays, and I will see you in the next episode.
sick, dude. That little rhyme, that's sick, bruh.